Hey y'all and welcome back to Lantern Creek Farm. We are making our way up to the garden. I've already started a project. Went back and forth as to whether I wanted to video it. That's why I'm out of breath. Went back and forth as to whether I wanted to show you all this or not. Um, just because I just want to get it done. And it takes a long, lot more time to video something and show you all how to do it than it does just to just get it done. But I went ahead and started it and I thought, well, I better show my people. So we are in the garden today. I've done prune the tomatoes. I didn't show you all that. Um, but if you've watched any of uh, the last couple garden videos, I talk about we only prune what is touching the ground or uh, what the ground can touch. So if we've got some low lying limbs on uh, or stems on a tomato plant and when it rains, the dirt can hop up and touch the plant, they're gone, I cut them. Anything that's touching the dirt, they're gone, I cut them. But these uh, tomato plants are ready to uh, be um, trellised, or what do you call it? I don't know, stood up. A lot of people use tomato cages. We've used tomato cages in the past, but we have found that it's just a lot easier um, to use tobacco sticks. If you do not know what tobacco sticks are, I'll go ahead and link one of the videos where I explain what tobacco sticks are. Um, but here in Kentucky, uh, most everybody, if you're born and raised here, you're gonna know what a tobacco stick is. And you're gonna know what I mean by using it in the garden. So as you can see here, these are the tobacco sticks. This one kind of looks a little wimpy because I just planted it accidentally, um, accidentally uh, cut, <laughs> broke a tomato plant, don't tell my husband. So I replaced it <laughs> with an early girl, um, but it's the first time it's been out uh, outside. Um, so it's looking a little leggy, but that's okay. The rest of them are doing wonderful here, um, but they are laying on the ground. So as you can see here, it has been really, really, really windy and the plants are going this way because the wind has been blowing this way. On top of that, um, we have been needing to get in here, but it has rained for days. So all that to say, I'm gonna show you all how um, we stake up our tomato plants and tie them up without using um, a tomato cage. All right, guys, you all are gonna have to bear with the lighting. Uh, like I said, I wasn't gonna video this because I just wanna get it done. Um, and so the lighting is absolutely not ideal. Um, it's gonna be shining in my face the entire time. My eyes are probably gonna be squinted. Um, and at times it's gonna be bright in the background. But I do wanna show you all how we do this. So as you can see here, I've got a tobacco stick here. Now I explained what it was in another video, but essentially it is a stick or a limb that is cut down into one of these sticks like this. They are pointed on both ends. Um, it was used to harvest tobacco and to hang tobacco in a tobacco barn. But I explained what it is on that other video, and like I said, I will link it, and I'll probably try to show somewhere on the screen um, my explanation of it. I've got multiple other tomatoes I gotta do. Looks like I've done one row this way and a couple this way. So uh, we got some work to get done. Uh, when you're not gonna get the perfect angles in this video. I'm not gonna try to make this a long video because like I said, I really just wanna get this done. Um, the tomatoes need it. Um, and we are supposed to get more rain, and so it needs done today. It's just dry enough where we can get in here. I'm packing the ground down, which is not my favorite, but we gotta do it. So let me show you how we do it. So I'm gonna take this tobacco stick here. The ground is soft enough that I can go ahead and push it in without using a hammer at first. And I'm gonna push it in the best I can, and then I'm gonna take a hammer. We're gonna to try to get it down a little bit farther. We wanna go right up next to the tomato. I did that one a little bit farther than what I needed to. You don't wanna, you wanna be careful when you're staking them in the ground because you don't wanna hit the tomato, but you want them as close to the, the tomato as possible uh, within a safe range. When I'm putting these stakes in, I'm putting them on the side that the wind comes. So the wind blows this way. We want to put these stakes in going this way. We want to support the tomato plant on which side is getting the most pressure. Uh, 
Um, towards the uh, towards the end of the season, we'll add more and more uh, stakes to the bigger to the bigger plants. Um, this one's short, so I probably don't want to get it too far. Um, we'll add more and more stakes to the tomato plants as needed. Um, sometimes you got to put two stakes and tie it on either side, depending on how large the plant gets. This is a shorter stake. Later on, it'll probably need a taller stake. Um, I've got two left here, but I've got a whole stack of sticks, tobacco sticks, down that way. So once I get these first couple done, um, I'm going to put one here and one there, um, and then we'll go get some more sticks. in our part of Kentucky um, tobacco sticks are plentiful um, and they're usually free or cheap to get a hold of um, so we have a good supply of them um, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough to finish today um, but we we've got a fellow farmer we can go to that was tobacco farmer in the past that we can get plenty of free sticks from and so if we need more we can grab more Right, guys so let's talk about what I use to tie them up to the sticks so you can use any kind of twine um, this is hay twine hay string we're gonna use this um, to tie them up I hope I have enough hay string um, we burned some here recently uh, I'm regretting that decision now and so I I dug through and found what I could find so hopefully I have enough if not, I can go uh, get some twine. But I want to show you all how we do this. So um, when you're tying your tomatoes up, and I'll show you in just a second, you're not wanting to tie them tight. All you're wanting to do is tie, the, so let's say this is the tomato here. We're going to use this chewed up co in his puppy stage. Um, we're going to, uh, this is the tomato plant. You want the tomato plant to just be tied loosely um, you want it tight enough that it'll stick that it'll stand up but you don't want it so tight that you're not giving that tomato plant room to grow um, so let's demonstrate so first I'm gonna cut well no I'm not I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna measure how much string I need because it's gonna depend on uh, the plant um, and sometimes you have to if it's a taller plant you got to tie it up multiple times um, so we'll just have to see um, but we want to tie it on that stalk. Don't don't tie it to the limb. You want to tie it on the stalk. So we have our beef steak tomato here. I'm going to show you. Here's the stalk. So the limbs start here. So I want to get kind of to the top here is before it starts bushing out. And so that means I'm going to go in between this limb and that stalk here. I'm going to take my string and I'm going to loosely, can you see how that still has, you know, it still has pull. I'm going to loosely tie that. So let me cut this off. And 
and I'm going to loosely tie that. And uh, once I get it tied, I'll bring the camera over here. So there is my tie. Can you see how that still has room to grow? If we can move these limbs. It still has room to grow, but it's holding that tomato plant. I could probably even tie, or tie it tighter than that. Also, when you're tying these, you like I said, you want to get it before it bushes here. Um, and But you want to kind of have it in between where it bushes and a limb if you can, because that's going to keep that that's going to keep that, that uh, twine or whatever you're tying it with um, up um, and, and um, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give it a little bit more support up towards the, stop, uh, the top. And like I said, you want to do it on the stock, not on a limb, on the stock. We'll go ahead and do another one. I do need to tie uh, that, uh, the next one a little bit tighter than that, um, but you all get the gist of what I'm saying, I believe. All right, I got you a little bit closer now. So what I'm gonna do is look for that, that limb that comes up before it bushes here. We're gonna cut a string. Like I said, we wanna leave it a little bit loose. That way we're giving the stock um, room to get some girth on it. About there's good. And we're gonna cut that string or twine or whatever you're using. Guys, this doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you're literally just staking at the plant. So don't make it harder than what it needs to be, but that is the gist of it here. Um, we'll do one more together, um, and then uh, we'll get through these and get them tied. So, like I said before, we're going to look for that bottom limb before it starts bushing out. As you can tell here, I'm not using a tobacco stick. I'm using a metal pole. So, you can use anything. And while I'm doing this, there's something I, else I wanted to talk about. So, why do sticks in, instead of cages? There's a couple reasons why, so let's, let's get into it. As you can see, we tied it over that top limb, and it's got room to grow. There is a couple reasons as to why we use sticks instead of cages. In the beginning of the video, I told you that we had used cages in the past. Cages are helpful and handy, and, you know, if that's all you have, then that's all you have. But there's a couple reasons as to why we use sticks, stakes, instead of tomato cages. The first reason that I can think of is that cages are bulky. They're big. They take up more space and it's harder to, um, to till. It's harder to weed out in a tomato cage than it is for the sticks. And that's maybe two reasons in one right there, that they're big and bulky and it's harder to weed and to till. Um, we, if you didn't watch our, our last video, or I don't know if it was our last video, our last couple videos, I'll link that one as well. Um, it's the same video I talk about tobacco sticks in. We use a tiller in our garden, and we specifically space our rows out so that we can get a tiller in. That way we don't have to weed by hand as much. The second reason, um, and maybe the less, uh, the less, um, I don't know, less useful reason is that it is just our culture. It is something that we've raised up, um, that we've raised up and seen, and so that's why we use them. That's going to be the less useful reason. Our third reason is going to be that we can come by tobacco sticks way cheaper than we can tomato cages. Tomato cages, you can make them, but you have to buy wire to make them. And I don't know if any of you have bought wire here recently, but it is expensive. Um, or you can buy a tomato cage, but it's still, it's going to cost you something. Um, tobacco sticks in our area are very readily available. They're either cheap or very free, uh, or cheap or, yeah, very free and very cheap in our area. And so we can come by them really quickly and really easily 
um, way more um, than we can tomato cages. They're way cheaper than tomato cages. And honestly, guys, don't this look better? I don't know about you all, but to me, it just looks like a lot less clutter. It looks a lot less, uh, looks a lot more neat. So let me see if I can kind of get over here. I don't know if this is going to be the better lighting or not, but I'll just kind of show you here. Can you see how kind of neat that looks? The rows look straight and it looks neat. And it's going to be a lot neater too, as far as getting in here and weeding. Here's the other side. As far as getting in here and weeding, we can get a lot more weeds um, uh, through here than we can with big bulky tomato cages. Because if you take, let's see, we'll look at this one here. Hopefully my shadow's not in the way. A, tomato's gonna, a tomato cage is going to take up from here to here. That's going to leave a lot less walking room to get in here and uh, to be able to till up and to weed. So there's my reasons as to why we use tomato cages. I don't know if they're going to be relevant for you. Um, probably the most relevant reasons is it's going to be easier to weed. Um, it's going to um, it's going to take up a lot less space. So if you do not have tobacco sticks, you could definitely use sticks. We had some metal poles uh, that we had from a project. We're using metal poles. Um, you can uh, we uh, in years past we've used the little um, what is it called like pipe that are about this size, stuck them down in the ground and rolled on. Uh, they just look a lot nicer to me and they're a lot easier to just get in and out of the garden. I mean, they're a lot easier to stake your tomatoes up because sometimes those tomato cages just don't want to stand up when the plant gets too heavy and they start growing out of the tomato cage and I don't know. They're just not as uh, helpful for us, my opinion, as it is just to use the sticks. After bending over and staking 51 tomato plants, guys, by back. Oh, it's so sore. It's tight. But we got it done. 51. I didn't even count them when we had planted them before, so I didn't even know how many we had put in the ground. Um, so, 51 tomato plants. But we got them staked, and uh, all of them looked wonderful. Um, I did notice we've got some bug damage on some, some of them. There's like little tiny black bugs crawling on them. I don't know what kind of bugs they are. Um, don't really want to know. That's kind of... Um, but they're eating on the tomato plants. And so I went ahead and cut off the um, the limbs that had a bug damage on them. Um, if you're going to... A lot of times... Let's see if I can show you. I don't know where I've done cut them. Um, so I'm trying to find a sucker. If you've never heard of a sucker, let me see, might be one here. So on this tomato plant, let me flip the camera around and I'll show you. So this is not damaged. You can kind of see that discoloring. That was where the tomato plant was laying down on the ground because of the wind and how wet it's been. So on this particular plant, you notice there's a stem here. In between the stem and the, the stalk, and the stem, there is another plant coming up. That is a sucker. Um, sometimes people cut those off. Sometimes I cut them off. Sometimes I don't. It just depends. Um, a lot of limbs I've had to trim off today. So if I trim a limb off, I'm going to leave the sucker on because that sucker will produce fruit. Um, and if I'm already trimming the stalk and having to trim off more than I would like to, um, I'm going to leave that sucker that way where you're, uh, you know, increasing our chances of getting more fruit when I have to cut um, some limbs off that had damage from bugs. Well guys, that's all I can think of when it comes to tomato plants and staking them up right off the top of my head. Um, I've got to clean up my mess. Got some loose strings and my hammer and stuff. I got to clean up my mess. Um, now down through, uh, down through the season, you're going to see us probably, uh, like I said earlier on the video, adding more stakes. Um, when they get larger, sometimes they need two stakes. But like, like I said, guys, this just looks a lot neater to me than the tomato cages. It's also a lot easier. A lot of times you put a tomato cage on and you're having to tie the tomato to the cage. And this really just eliminates the bulk of a tomato cage just to have the stakes. So anyways, guys, I appreciate y'all watching. I appreciate y'all hanging out. And hopefully we can see y'all on the next one. Y'all be blessed. God bless y'all. We'll see you later. Bye.